sometimes get questions on the live stream. So I'll, I'll post the link to that here in Zoom chat just so we know where it is. So thanks everyone for joining the meetup today. Uh, we have Sonak Roy with us today. Um, he is from Accenture. He's also one of the Hyperledger Bevel maintainers. And today he'll be speaking about automated Hyperledger fabric network with Bevel and Bevel operator fabric. If you have any questions throughout the event, we certainly encourage you to ask. You could just type your question in Zoom chat. Um, and then we can take those as we go. Uh, uh, and then if you're watching this on YouTube, you can type in the YouTube uh, chat too. Uh, um, and with that, I will hand it over to Sana. Yep, thanks David uh, and welcome everyone. Uh, yep, so this is more of a workshop as well as a discussion on how uh, uh, to use Hyperledger Bevel with Hyperledger um, uh, Bevel Operator Fabric, which is which we uh, onboarded into uh, Bevel uh, all, uh, at the start of this year, I guess. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is more of an automation uh, rather rather than uh, like doing the manual processes that uh, you generally follow when using Hyperledger uh, so operator, Bevel Operator Fabric. Um, so I would, yeah, thanks for everyone else who is, you know, kind of uh, not speaking beyond mute. And then you can always ask the questions on the this Zoom chat as well as YouTube chat. Uh, I think YouTube chat is preferable because it stays the question. Uh, Zoom chat will disappear uh, after the end of the session. Uh, but yeah, and I'll ask uh, Subhajit, this my colleague uh, from Accenture as well, he's here. So I'll ask Subhajit to, you know, check, keep an eye, and maybe David as well, to keep an eye on the questions because I cannot see uh, the YouTube uh, questions. Right, so I'll start with the sharing my screen. Um, yeah, so this is basically my uh, dev environment. Uh, and uh, yeah, just uh, before we start, uh, I'll give you a brief on uh, Hyperledger Bevel and Bevel Operator Fabric uh, for, for the new joiners or newcomers who are not that experienced with Hyperledger Bevel. So Hyperledger Bevel is an automation framework, uh, which uh, uh, which you can use to deploy uh, different DLT networks like Hyperledger Fabric, Hyperledger Indy, Besu, even Corda, Enterprise Corda, um, and GoCorum um, as, as, as a format of substrate now um, uh, on, on your choice of uh, Kubernetes cluster, basically. Uh, so we we it's it's uh, production worthy. So that means we uh, have a layer bevel is is uh, can be directly used in production. We have uh, secret management via Vault, and we have uh, continuous in uh, integration and delivery via GitOps. So that is that was the first. Uh, you know, the introduction of Hyperledger Bevel, well, we, we used it. And then recently, we also incorporated uh, Bevel Operator Fabric into the Bevel kind of umbrella, uh, because that's also a deployment tool you'll use to deploy only Fabric. So the first difference between Bevel and Bevel Operator Fabric is that Bevel Operator Fabric is only deploys Fabric, whereas Bevel you can use to deploy uh, other networks as well. Um, so how, how it generally works with Bevel is uh, for a very simplistic approach. Uh, I'm, I'm giving an example. It is not actually that that does. Uh, that simple is is that we uh, we uh, you have a network YAML file which is which is called network we generally in Bevel terms we call it network YAML. So basically that's a configuration file. It's a YAML file uh, where you write all the configurations that you want the network to be in, and then you uh, we have Ansible playbooks. So you provide that input as an input to the Ansible playbook. Uh, and like say example, the playbook is deploy network or the playbook is uh, create a channel. Uh, and uh, once you provide that, and then you just um, execute the playbook and uh, by the then Bevel, that automation will do all the setup like certificate uh, creation and then updates and uh, user creation, for example, in case of Fabric and, and then deployment of peers, orders or, or validator nodes in case of Besu. So that's the summary. Uh, Bevel Operator Fabric 
is uh, is uh, as as I said is a, is an operator framework. Uh, so the update on Bevel is that we are trying to move to a more operator Kubernetes operator framework kind of option. So the first foray is into was taking into uh, the HLF operator and and called is is now called Bevel operator fabric. And then we aim to uh, with your support with the with the community support we aim to uh, get. Uh, support for uh, like Hyperledger, Besu, as well as Corda as a similar uh, concept using operator. Uh, say you run it using kubectl, HLF, uh, and then create peer. That's the sample that you have for, for operator uh, fabric. So with that, um, so that's the basic is, is there, there, I can see some chats. Uh, is there any question or just hellos? Uh, no question, just asking for YouTube links. All right. Okay. So with that, I'll start in in um, uh, the description, basically. So so as I was saying, Bevel uh, uses uh, this network YAML automation. And also based the, the core Bevel, uh, I mentioned, uses Vault for secret management, where you store all the, all the uh, certificates, uh, the public keys, as well as the private keys, and, and also uh, some passwords. For example, you have a CouchDB password or a MySQL DB password. You can store that and then securely get it uh, into your Kubernetes uh, net, uh, Kubernetes uh, environment, uh, and also it uses GitOps. Uh, now, uh, GitOps is is a concept where uh, you uh, check in. Uh, it's basically operations via Git. So you check in uh, or update a file, and then uh, GitOps. Uh, is called, we use the Flux operator in that that in that case uh, for basically in, in Bevel. Uh, then Flux operator will get the latest uh, check in that you have made from that particular branch. You you can configure a specific branch. Uh, you have to configure a specific branch, and then it will update. Uh, the Kubernetes cluster uh, with the latest from that gate. So what happens is uh, initial, when you do the initial deployment of the network, for example, you basically just create files and check it in and then Flux will take it uh, you know, take it from there. And then the advantage with that is if you want to change it, for example, you want to increase the memory or the CPU for from a Kubernetes point of view or change the Docker, uh, you know, uh, the, doc the Docker images uh, that we, you are passing uh, to the uh, Kubernetes, uh, to the Helm charts, uh, you can just update the files and then do a git commit. And, and git push, uh, then uh, Flux will automatically take care of it. So that's the concept of GitOps. Um, and uh, but then when with operator, you don't need to do that. Uh, operator is is a different approach. I guess many of you have used the operator uh, here, uh, Bevel operator fabric basically already, and it it comes with all these uh, commands like kubectl, hlf. You have to install uh, more um, CLIs uh, locally. Uh, on our and on the Kubernetes cluster, uh, the operator basically, and then uh, you run the kubectl hlf commands to set that up. It doesn't use need vault or uh, GitOps, uh, so you can use the same commands to update, uh, create update uh, the the network. For example, uh, adding a peer or or removing a peer, or or uh, updating updating a peer basically. Okay, so coming with that, so I'll show you the difference first between these two. So uh, again, I'll explain how uh, like, um, taking into account that there may be some new uh, people here. Uh, so Bevel is, uh, this is, uh, it's called BAP demo, but it's, it's the Bevel uh, repository. Uh, and it is, uh, it has these uh, platforms folder and under platforms, we have all the supported platforms, Besu, Fabric, Indie, uh, Substrate, Corda, Enterprise, Corda, and Quorum. Uh, shared is like a common platform, uh, common for all. Uh, so like all the common program, uh, common uh, code is, is here and all the specific code is here. And then under Fabric, uh, you will have uh, these charts, configurations, images, releases, and scripts. Um, so charts contain all the Helm charts. Now, our Helm charts are now available on um, github uh, as as a helm uh, repo as well uh, 
uh, and then you have the configuration, which are the Ansible uh, roles and examples. So in that you have under configuration, you have the samples folder where all the different samples are provided. Yeah, you see a lot of samples for fabric because fabric uh, is the most popular uh, used uh, in for Hyperledger Bevel um, network that is used. And hence you have different, we have provided different samples for different uh, operations. So in that one is the, uh, the newest one is the network operator fabric YAML. And uh, the normal one is the fabric V2. And I've just compared the two uh, so that you can see what's the difference. So if you see the first difference is that the version of fabric that is supported. So by default um, fabric, uh, Bevel operator fabric supported uh, supports two pipe three as well. Uh, we are yet we are from a Bevel point of view <laughs> not yet done. I think it's is uh, still ongoing. Um, but uh, uh, so two 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 point two point two is the latest one that we supported. But I think we'll be finishing two point five point x uh, sometime soon. So this is the first difference. The second difference, of course, is for using operator. Uh, you have to use the ENV type as operator. Uh, here, ENV type was anything because you will deploy on different uh, clusters. So depending on the cluster or the environment, you can you can name it as such. Uh, but for uh, for using operator, it must be operator. So this is a must. As I mentioned it as do not change this. And the proxy is Istio, uh, whereas the proxy for normal Bevel was HA proxy. Uh, why is Istio? Is because HA proc uh, sorry, uh, Bevel operator fabric itself only supports Istio right now. Uh, I didn't want to change that to HA proxy and uh, create all uh, different um, you know branch out of it. So we're just uh, supporting Istio as well uh, on Bevel side. Uh, retry count is you the retry for checks. I don't think it matters. These are matters for for operator fabric because you don't have retries and all generally in 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 this. The rest of the uh, uh, you know, configurations are same between the two. You have the consensus mechanism. I think anyway, uh, for uh, 2.5, the only consensus is raft, uh, but I've kept the uh, format same. Uh, then you have the orderer section where you also have the orderer certificates. It can be stored locally. Uh, for the chain, for the chain course part, uh, is I if not we have we are not yet supporting the chain course via the fabric uh, operator fabric. Uh, but of course, it is supported via normal bevel. Uh, but the idea is that you can you should be able to use the operator uh, the fabric console uh, which is supported in operator uh, to to create the or deploy chain codes or or its own specific commands to deploy the chain codes so i've not made it in an kind of the automation way uh, but yeah if anyone is interested to incorporate that yeah feel please feel free to create a pr uh, an issue and a pr so rest are kind of same the major difference that you'll notice is that there is no uh, vault section and there is no github section for uh, for the operator so as i said uh, the in operator all the secrets are stored directly as kubernetes secrets and there is no gitops uh, so uh, you will use the just kubectl hlf function uh, commands to uh, manage the network so you don't have gitops and and you don't have vault so that's those are the mainly i would say three major differences between current network yaml and the operator network yaml uh, and i'm using the same example of our uh, supply chain which which has like five organizations where the first organization uh the first organization is uh, uh, is the order organization and you have like four uh, peer organizations each having one peer so that's that's the explanation and uh, right any questions for now let me check i think it has most of them have been uh, replied by suvajit anything suvajit from youtube uh, no nothing as of now Okay, so with that, so that's the examples I already have formatted, you know, filled the network operator fabric. Uh, yeah, uh, network operator fabric here. Uh, so 
uh, this is the example. So what you will generally is same as with Bevel. What what you do is change, update these uh, thing, uh, these username, passwords, etc. Here uh, in the network YAML file, and we'll pass that to uh, the site.yaml, which is our master or the main. Just a second. Uh, that is our main uh, uh, playbook. Um, so you will also use your update your uh, proxy uh, because the STO should be configured according to the proxy. Um, uh, and, um, and then what you will update is mainly because I'm using AWS here. So our cloud provider is AWS. So you will also have to provide the AWS access key and secret key. And and the details to the Kubernetes, basically the Kubernetes cluster uh, region. I don't think region is generally used, but mainly the context uh, and the cluster config file, which is the cube config uh, .yaml. Though, so those paths. And yeah, with with that, uh, you are ready. Uh, of course, if you want to add more organizations or delete some organizations, you can you can delete the organization or create another organization. Um, when Bevel was designed, um, it was mainly for multi each organization being deployed on a different cluster. Um, and that is why you have uh, these getting repeated. So you can follow the same model in operator as well for when using uh, operator fabric, you can have multiple organization, uh, multiple clusters for each uh, for the same network. But in, in of course, in, in this example, I'll use the same cluster uh, for all the organizations. Uh, but it should it will be applicable uh, uh, accessible from externally as well because we will be using Istio as the um, as the uh, the proxy provider, right? So with that, uh, so this is the command that uh, we use, which is same command as in as in Bevel for deployment. Uh, so Ansible playbook uh, shared uh, platform shared configuration site.yaml that's the main yaml file and then i'm providing a path uh, to my uh, updated uh, network yaml which of course doesn't have cluster region but actually uh, say us one and and all the passwords etc and i will execute that and so what this playbook does is a lot of different things, of course, but for initially uh, it will check for the validity of the, that's what is happening now, is checking for the validity of the network YAML uh, using the, uh, the AJV validate. And then uh, we uh, will install Istio uh, because Istio is not, was not, may, may not be, not have been installed, uh, we'll install Istio. It will also deploy the HLF operator on the cluster um uh, which is uh, which are those are the prerequisites anyways and once that is done then it will uh, depending on how you have configured the fab the net uh, yaml file it will uh, create like the order organization and the peer organizations and after that uh, it will also create the uh, channel and we end that channel uh, because as I said, the chain code deployment, uh, I, we have not support yet, uh, but please feel free to, uh, if you want to do that yourself, you can feel free to do it and we can create an issue and, and uh, we are always open to new PRs. All right, while this is happening, uh, any burning questions? Nothing on the chat though. Okay. So yeah, so right now, as you can see, we are uh, installing the Istio Ingress controller. So I have lens here as well, which will um, I'll show um, on the, so that you can see uh, what is happening on the cluster. So as you can see, uh, the Istio pod is getting deployed. And uh, I've deployed Istio as um, how it is required by, um, the uh, fa bevel fab operator fabric to be deployed, uh, to be configured. So that's that's how it is configured. It's most more or less default. Um, the only thing that is is that we are using eight port eighty, the default ports, which is port eighty and four four three. And uh, that is why you see um, that 
uh, the the peer IDs mainly or the orderer gRPC uh, addresses are uh, have 443. Uh, in the readme, I have already also mentioned that this 443 is mandatory uh, because if you remove this, then uh, uh, Fabric doesn't understand that, you know, it says that the port is missing, uh, especially because it's actually trying to access the gRPC uh, port by, via this address. It is a gRPC address, so it doesn't uh, uh, automatically think that it is a 443 port. Shanak, uh, there's a question from Dominic asking about uh, why we don't support deployment of chain codes yet on uh, op net operator Fabric. Oh, uh, that is because we don't have uh, time to do it. <laughs> we don't didn't have time to do it. So if uh, some if you are able to do it, uh, then yeah, you can send a PR. Um, it's it's uh, open and you have all the instructions on how the chain code works, uh, deployment works on uh, on the web operator fabric. Anyways. And you can, uh, I mean, this is basically the automation part, as I was saying, uh, because if you have gone through the demo videos of HLF, uh, or HLF operator, bevel operator fabric, you would have noticed that it is uh, like you have to give the command step by step, like uh, create, uh, create uh, orderer, create CA, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but uh, this is the automation part. So you after this net basic network is created, you can uh, deploy the chain code by using the commands directly as has been specified in um, operator fabric. So if see now it's trying to create a CA server for org uh, for each org and I'll go and see what's happening on the lens. Yeah, so Again, all this basically automation take, taking care of everything. Uh, so we have uh, each namespace for each organization. That is how uh, Bevel works. Um, and in each namespace, uh, it is trying to create uh, the supply, the CA pods. Uh, so yeah, so they are running. And if we uh, check the um, operator side as well, which is uh, which appears and uh, as this HLF Kung Fu software ES. So if we see here, you can see that yeah, the the CAs have been created, and the status is not up showing because yeah. So you can see the status is running. So that means they are successfully uh, created. If if there is any other status, uh, then that means it is basically not not working properly. I uh, can check the logs as well. I can see the orderer is getting created now, and you can you will see the very difference uh, different in in the speed uh, that it is happening, uh, because uh, operator fabric of course is is much uh, faster because you are not not using not doing the vault authentication and first of all, uh, in in a normal level you will have to uh, first create or create the authentication between vault and Kubernetes and then do everything, uh, and secondly uh, we are not using GitOps because GitOps is like a polling kind of inform method, which uh, will poll after one minute or two minutes. Uh, and only then you will get the updates. And that is why we have so much weights in in uh, uh, in fab, in bevel usual bevel but in here it is it's very fast it's command uh, just like giving a command prompt it takes some seconds as you see like the peer and the order um, the peer is taking some time because it's provisioning the uh, the couch db etc like as a pvc uh, so it's taking some time but it is it is much faster uh, and uh, than uh, bevel uh, mainly because they were not using GitOps, i would say so yep yeah, so that's the orderer one two three have been set up now if i go and check uh, the uh, the actual services so you have this you can see uh, that the orderers have been created and its states are running and the age i you know it's just created right now it's not something that i created earlier uh, you can now the peers also should be created uh, some of them or not yeah, yet, yes. Uh, so the peers are also here. We have, uh, as per my organization or my network YAML, we have four peers each, only peer zero. Uh, so one peer each organization so that these are pending. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the status is also changing. Uh, yeah, so now, now they're running and now all the peers should be running. Uh, we'll do a log of the peer. Yep. So the peer has is been has run has, has been created. 
now we are creating the channel uh, same concept as we do for for uh, bevel uh, you, we create all the peers and then we create the channel channel configuration is at the top so uh, this is the channel all channel is a channel name and uh, that's what you see it's trying to create this uh, this channel okay The channel should be created now. Yep, so the channel is also created. See here, it says all channel is running. And you can see in warehouse peer logs uh, that the all channel Genesis block was created. And I think that's all. Uh, now we'll uh, it's just uh, doing all the uh, uh, all the things. Yeah, it's, it's basically complete. So you see, it's, it's super fast uh, in in that way. Uh, where is where was I? Yeah. So after the main channel, I think the final thing that we do is create the follower channel, uh, which is basically kind of creating the uh, the anchor peers. So if you see here, yeah, they they were all they are all running, and hence you have this message saying that the membership view has changed, and this is the current view, which means um, this this is warehouse peer. So warehouse peer has connection to uh, carrier uh, store and manufacturer. And then, yeah, basically that's pretty much. We are almost done in half an hour. Uh, I can I can explain how how the code and all that works, and uh, maybe that will inspire you uh, to add the support for for chain code, um, chain code by your by yourself or someone uh, who is interested to get get their hands dirty uh, can can always uh, help um, because we we always look for. Um, contributors right any questions or other discussion Thank you. yeah um shanak there's a question uh on the chat mm -hmm. it's a long question i think you should read it or do you want okay. me to read i like i'm i'm all right uh how much is it possible to use this approach in a productive multi-company setup, meaning that companies have different separate infrastructure? Uh, yeah, so this one yeah, definitely can be used. Uh, of course, we have not done a POC uh, as such, but it uh, you, you most likely have to do a POC uh, first that it will actually work. Uh, but in general, uh, uh, from the current, we have a multi, uh, like both, orderer and peer scenario as well but that's supported on the uh on normal you know usual bevel not operator fabric uh, but in general what i would go is how how you go about uh, deploying uh, basically so i would say yeah deploy the orderer first and then share the orderer certificates uh, with and the addresses the public certificates definitely uh, with with the other companies and and then they can uh, deploy uh, their own uh, just the peers, for example, and use the order certificates. And um, yeah, you can you can uh, you definitely use different Kubernetes versions. But yeah, keep in mind that Bevel is supported on one point. I think one point current is one point two three. Uh, we'll move to one point two four or five directly once we upgrade our ambassador uh, because that's the main upgrade that is going on right now. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, one point two three. It also works on one point two two. Anyways. Um, yeah, you're using kind, which is which is fine. I think um, I think uh, the main problem that we faced with kind is memory issues and and the actual deployment of kind itself. Uh, after the kind, uh, because uh, we we use kind and also mini cube, and there the maximum we could get, especially for fabric, uh, was was just to deploy the one orderer with one raft node and and two two peers after that it would it would crash but yeah if you have a, a more powerful machine and uh, you know a huge memory like 64 gb ram and, and all that then you should be okay 
to use kind. Uh, but uh, both bevel and uh, operator fabric uh, is is mainly designed for for actual Kubernetes environments or or more production environments. <clears throat> okay, so in the meantime, I'll show you how actually it works. How we kind of go about. <clears throat> go about the deployment so uh, all all our playbooks are here under uh, configuration uh, so all these are all playbooks which means uh, they are uh, these are the basically the operations that you can do uh, using um, the ansible command uh, we we are trying to move away from ansible but we couldn't find any other better replacement which you will use just one command other than shell script uh, which you will just use one command <clears throat> and it will do everything automatically or the other option as as you know with operator fabric is that you have to use multiple commands like you have to use say or just write a shell script again to have say order one two three four etc but with with the current design that we have in in bevel uh is is you can just you need to only change the network yaml so if you want another orderer five orderers we i have created three if you want five you just add another orderer uh, with all the configuration files uh, information and you, you can just copy paste and change the name of the orderer to three four and five and if you deploy using uh, this uh, site.yaml it will work and you don't have to you know cop run the command again and again so uh, how the network operator uh, this is a deployment file that we that actually ran behind the scenes how it works is yeah, yeah you you we have a temporary uh, build directory where the temporary files are created uh, so that was that will remove so that you know when you are deploying uh, you have a fresh installation and then, of course, it creates the first of all, it will create the namespace for each organization. And then it will create the storage class. Uh, in our case, the storage class was already created. So, uh, so it was it didn't create so that all that check is also here uh, in, in our Ansible roles that if something is already there, uh, and you, you are doing the same thing, it doesn't actually try to do it again and waste time. Um, yeah, and then it creates the CA server and then registers the user uh, the uh, for each because you have to use register a user to use the ca uh, then you then we are creating the orderer nodes uh, then we are creating the peers and then we have to register the admin users for each organization uh, then we create the main channel uh, which is the all channel and then we do the join channel which is how you do use is basically creating the for follower channels uh, and and that's that's all as i said we are we're uh, finishing at this level now all the code or the configuration i would say is uh, as you see is, is in this folder uh, roles operator so these are the files so you have operator create ca follower etc cetera, etc cetera. So if you if someone wants to add a chain code, uh, create chain code, or you know uh, update chain code things, you, you have to you can do it here. Um, I'll give a sample. Yeah, so CA server. I'll give a very simple example. So it's just as you see, it's just a single command. So if you're running it uh, locally. Uh, like without bevel or ansible then you will most probably you know that you will most probably use this command right uh, directly here in in your command line saying kubectl hlf ca create uh, blah blah right and that's what is it's all doing so it's just that we are providing an abstraction and reading all these parameters uh, from uh, you can update here you can add it in the network yaml as well i don't think the the GI is uh, the gigabits can be passed on. It has to be is hard coded more or less. But uh, yeah, you can you can pass the URL. Uh, you can pass the cloud provider storage class name. Basically, we're using AWS, um, and and then the version, which is this is the CA image version. Uh, so yeah, all that is basically parameterized. Uh, similarly, if I go to orderer um so orderer yeah the only thing that i have added here is a check that first it checks that if the uh ca ca server is available this is the check uh because if it doesn't it's not available then it should not go forward uh, because ca is important uh, for orderer to work 
So once the CA uh, CA server is available, then it it yeah again uses the same kubectl hlf odd odd node create command, which is provided by operator. Uh, yeah, and similar parts. And the only difference is that yeah, I've looped it over how many ever orders you want to create, and that is why I said like if you uh, just increase the number of orders to five from three, it will it will just work. You don't have to run this uh, yourself. And there is a wait here for the orders to start uh, and and then once we orders are started we get the uh, tls certificates uh, as i said that these are the public certificates that you will generally use in a product in a, your production environment that you will share offline with your other peers so that they are able to connect uh, to the uh, order because uh, fabric by default is secure uh, so in that case uh, if you just have the ip address or the uh, order address it will not work you will also need to access uh, ha have the csr certificate okay so there was a question then can you share procedure or script you use for kind setup uh, no i don't i we don't have we don't use kind uh, we have some uh, previously used minikube uh, but we don't generally share the setup because the setup uh, always differs uh, from machine to machine and operating system to operating system so you'll have to follow the actual uh, you know the guidance for kind itself uh, otherwise, yeah, we uh, we have tried it earlier for many years since BAF. Uh, we call we used uh, we used to call Bevel as blockchain automation framework BAF. Since then, uh, there were the same questions have come, but unfortunately, uh, it had never worked. It was not one code to rule them all kind of scenario because everyone has a different machine and a different version of Minikube. Minikube also or even Kind keeps on changing, and yeah it's very difficult to for us to keep up with those we'll rather focus on the development of bevel uh, itself yeah so there was a question like uh, about the other uh, planned uh, supported etc so certificate renewal backup recovery uh, i'm not sure subhijit correct me if do, is that are these supported in operator fabric um, i think the certificate renewal is there i'm mm -hmm. happy to check about i don't think recovery or backup is, is there but i'm sure yeah. about certificate renewal will yeah be so so yeah so the the concept is that um, we are, i have anyway we have not tried in this example the demo that i gave you we are not trying to redefine uh, operator Bev, operator fabric uh, it's it's just whatever features operator fabric is has provided i have used or we have used it uh, a subset of it uh, to make it easier so the certificate renewal and all if it is already supported by operator fabric you can you can just run it uh, run it after this as well like you know you can just type uh, whatever is the command kubectl um, hlf uh, certificate renewal i I'm, I'm not sure it's not on top of my head uh, that command to do your certificate renewal yeah as like similar here because you will know what your order images and order names, et cetera, are all, have already been created. So uh, you can use them and even your Istio is running. So you can use that directly. Uh, backup recovery, I guess you were talking about uh, uh, the whole Kubernetes cluster backup or recovery, I think. Um, in that case, yeah, uh, for both for Bevel and Operator Fabric, I don't think it is kind of inherently supported in there. Uh, it is more or less an operation or a like a network operations kind of thing. So you will uh, when you will anyway have your own uh, agency and uh, uh, processes that you dip, you back up the Kubernetes cluster itself. I think there are multiple tools available in the market which uh, using which you can uh, back up whole kubernetes cluster
and uh, going back to the other exam you know the uh, the same question if we go back uh, to what bevel in general supports uh, as you see here we have so many operator uh, so many uh, separate different playbooks uh, for the use of operators but we'll also try to move forward moving forward we'll we'll uh, you know not use the ansible as i said uh, in in all the cases uh, maybe we'll only use the ansible uh, to deploy the basic network like I, how i did and then use either uh, the already existing uh, fabric uh, operations console uh, to deploy and and do the uh, the renewals, et cetera, deploy chain code, for example, is with the life cycle, I think it's very easy um, to, uh, to do the uh, chain code uh, deployments using operator, uh, sorry, fabric operations console. Uh, but yeah, so these are the, you know, these are the things that we now support on Bevel. Uh, you have, uh, you know, adding an organization, adding a peer, things which it was uh, explained on Discord recently that what is the difference that adding organization is adding a whole organization and adding a peer is adding one new peer, say peer one or peer two, to an existing organization. Uh, we also have uh, the chain code upgrades. Uh, we also have external chain code support now uh, where you can uh, deploy external chain code. Of course, the uh, the Docker image, et cetera, the coding of the, Im of the chain code has to be done by yourself. The coding and packaging uh, of the chain code has to be done by yourself is here you, you're just deploying uh, the, the network. Um, then yeah, user certificates. This is quite an old feature now on on Bevel. Uh, you can you can manage basically refresh the user certificates because uh, by default, Bevel certificates expire uh, after one year. And uh, we also did the setup uh, the Cactus connector support. So basically, uh, you can deploy. <clears throat> the cact a version of cactus connector on on the net same network so that uh, you can uh, go and connect uh, uh, connect uh, connect with other networks uh, uh, connect from other networks into the fabric network that you have deployed uh, how uh, that's how you know provided by cactus Right. Any more questions, burning topics we want to discuss? Any questions on, on YouTube, Subhajit? <clears throat> There's a question on chat um, about uh, plans for adding more operational activity. Yeah, which I guess I already answered <laughs> that. Uh, uh, so the Bevel team is constantly looking for contributors. Uh, if you are interested to see a uh, certificate location, uh, or, uh, I don't think ledger truncation is supported by uh, operator fabric itself so uh, maybe in that case you'll have to uh, send a pr for operation fa fabric first and but the certificate re renewal etc uh, yeah so anyone who is interested uh, you know please uh, these these are the features that are already supported in operator fabric but yeah they are manual not uh, done via a single command like like this. Uh, so if you are if you want to see it as a single command, then you can all happy to please feel free to contribute. Or if you just want to use it yourself without contributing, uh, you can anyway run as I as explaining kubectl hlf uh, commands. Uh, there is a question about what is the overall goal for this tech. Uh, so interesting question. Uh, the overall goal for this tech, which by tech I'm assuming you're saying Hyperledger Bevel, 
uh, and and web operator fabric. Uh, so the overall goal for this tech is making deployment of DLT networks easier and consistent, so that uh, people are not trying to reinvent the wheel. They don't have to follow different approaches like Kubernetes, for example, or uh, when you try to deploy quorum network or follow the manual steps in try when trying to deploy a base network so we're trying to provide a, a single kind of similar singular approach uh, which uh, which is bevel to deploy your production uh, what the networks and you can do it via operator fabric as well uh, because that's anyway the model that will uh, support going forward There is a question on support this on ARM processor. I'm I'm not sure uh, what what is uh, the. So you want to run Ansible on ARM processor? Is is that the question, Gangadhar? Uh, right. So yeah. Um, so I we don't test on ARM processor uh, because, uh, yeah, no one has came up come up uh, with with that. Uh, request. I think there were some questions earlier that uh, uh, it is uh, is it supported on ARM, etc. But yeah, if if Ansible is supported, it should be. But our current code is mainly Ubuntu based uh, or Linux based, and uh, it's is normal x86 processor. Yeah, so we we are not uh, we we have not tested on Mac M1 or M2 uh, because from our research, uh, it we don't think that a lot of uh, network operations are happening from uh, Mac, uh, especially for production. Uh, it's, it's basically more or less Linux or Ubuntu. Uh, but you can, I mean, we have uh, in all the playbooks, uh, you can, uh, not this one. Yeah, in this one, yeah. So uh, playbooks, these three things are there. Uh, you, I, I, I'm sure if you just update it uh, with, uh, ARM inform install uh, the OS and the architecture. Uh, these two fields, uh, it's uh, going to work. Uh, though we have not tested. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Satish has a very good question. How where do I configure um, the Ansible to connect to the KTS cluster? in the network YAML or specific playbook. Yeah, so yeah, it is very good question. Uh, it is configured, uh, the connection is via just these three parameters in the network YAML. So you don't actually, uh, you connect internally because Ansible has a lot of uh, Kubernetes, um, uh, what is it called, plugins, I would say, uh, so that you connect to the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, but we are using the local, so we're installing kubectl, et cetera, locally, uh, wherever you are running the Ansible from. And that is what site.yaml does. It it's also installs the required prerequisite software, for example, kubectl and kubectl HLF plugin uh, for, uh, for the operator. Uh, so once that is done, uh, then we just pass the uh, the con con connection uh, context basically, uh, and that's how you uh, connect to Kubernetes cluster. And uh, each the KTS part is separate for different uh, separate organizations. So if you are managing, um, uh, if you are managing uh, your uh, you, if you have access to multiple Kubernetes clusters from the same machine, for example, this machine, uh, then you should be able to deploy uh, multiple Kubernetes, uh, sorry, multiple, uh, the same fabric on multiple Kubernetes clusters. Okay. Is it possible to add a new organization in existing network? Uh, it is. Uh, I think it's, uh, I've not supported it on the automation part, but with fabric network fab operator, sorry, bevel operator fabric, uh, it should be able, you should be able to add a new organization easily uh, into an existing network. Um, yeah, I think that's what we are doing anyways, when I run this command, where is it? Uh, yeah this peer uh, so here as you see creating the peer node uh, we are anyway um, kind of adding a new peer each time so 
uh, if you you can you have you follow the same process of creating the ca certificate server for that particular organization and uh, then uh, deploy uh, you know or create the peer node using the kubectl hlf peer create command Um, and then and the main thing is uh, adding the channel, I think, uh, or updating the channel. <clears throat> okay. Any further questions? Uh, okay, what channel can we uh, seek support? Yeah, you can. Uh, the Discord is there always. Um, we have a. Do we have a link for Discord, uh, Shubhajit or David? Uh, Discord is there. You know, you can. You know, I, I think you can. You, you have the access. Yeah, I just posted a link. <clears throat> There's a page uh, on our wiki with a lot of details about how to get an invite and where our channel, some of the channels are. Yeah. Yeah, so for both Bevel, the traditional Bevel and Bevel Operator Fabric, these are the commands, uh, sorry, uh, the channels. Uh, so you, you post, if you, you can find some answer already, which have been asked here. And for Operator Fabric, uh, this is the channel um, uh, where you can ask questions about, get support on Operator Fabric, just the Operator Fabric itself. Yeah, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, you have to get access to this channel. But I guess uh, whoever is working with Hyper Ledger uh, should have get access anyways. <clears throat> uh, if your organization wants to organize a training or implementation, so um, I think uh, training wise, uh, we do do we do have these kind of meetups. You can follow the meetup channels. I'm not sure which which Hyperledger channel you join. You can join you know join them and follow uh, specific topics like Hyperledger Bevel or space say Fabric. Uh, because you are interested in Fabric, so you can go through the training. We also have Hyperledger um, Global Forum, which happens uh, almost every year um, and uh, where we, we do more uh, deep dive workshops. Uh, for private custom training, uh, I don't think we have any kind of... Uh, uh, David, do we have any kind of channel via Hyperledger where uh, we can have a custom training? Let me get a link here. Um, just one second. So the Linux Foundation does offer trainings. Uh, um, we don't currently have one specific to Bevel, but maybe that's something Sonak, you and I should talk about when when we think like there's a level of maturity and Bevel's at the point where uh, um, you know it's ready for that. But you can take a look at the training page to see what courses and certifications we do offer for Hyperledger projects. So that's something. And we do have a training team. Mm. They do have the ability to offer, if that's something you want, to offer like on-site, you know, uh, uh, courses. But the the main model of our courses is self-paced online courses. And again, um, we usually focus our trainings on graduated projects. But again, Sonic, when you think that, you know, Bevel is at the point where, you know, we should start thinking about training, you know, we could talk about the graduation process and yeah. getting the yeah, training so going and everything. Yeah, on that note, I mean, we're trying, we are going to go for uh, version one uh, by end of this year. 
um but uh, yeah it's not as the version one that we wanted but i think it is we have enough users uh, on the that's what i i gather from the questions that we have on bevel channel itself and even operator fabric uh, that we have a lot of users who who face uh, similar issues so uh, yeah our training i i guess yeah we can discuss it <laughs> separately david that yeah. i think we can get uh, training even if it is uh, you know say non graduated but uh, let see but i think in the meantime the best thing to do are these series of you know you've done yeah. a workshop earlier this year you've done this meetup i think yeah as you said if people want to look for keep an eye on our channels we'll do these periodically you know i don't know sonic when you're planning to maybe do another one of these maybe early next year but i think for now going on discord and looking out for these sessions is probably you know the best thing to do and these sessions are recorded so you know if you want to use this internally you know all this is public you can use this session the recording of this session internally for uh, you know a training um so these resources are available yeah and the youtube channel that is hosting now that has all the trainings right uh, uh -huh. all the all the meetups that is happening you can just search uh from there uh for hyperledger bevel for example you will get all the uh older uh, sessions as well, which some of them were much longer uh, because we did the whole uh, network deployment uh, if starting from Kubernetes deployment. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so if, if that is all, I think we, we are good to close uh any more questions All right, uh, that's all then. Thanks everyone uh, for joining. Uh, I hope this uh, uh, this uh, was helpful and insightful. Uh, thank you for the questions as well. Definitely, you can understand that uh, there is, uh, you know, interest uh, in Bevel, and uh, I'm very happy to see all the questions um, and I've hopefully I've answered them properly and uh, once again as I kept on saying uh, we, we do need uh, contributors I know it can be a bit uh, daunting uh, to understand uh, you know Ansible at first but you can go and check uh, it's, it's we're not using Ansible in a very high uh in a complex way it's quite simply uh, simple way we are using ansible it's uh, mostly as as an automation tool as you can see it's, it's running shell commands uh, rather than writing shell scripts uh, i think uh, but yeah if you're if you want to automate uh, or give an example uh, of writing shell scripts uh, as well uh, to automate say adding a ch uh, chain code or uh, add creating a new channel um, i'm very happy i'm happy to take that on board uh, we we do have uh, bi-weekly uh, we, on mondays we have the calls of uh, for uh, bevel uh, roadmap and not roadmap but the scrum call and we have uh, a roadmap discussion every three months uh, so please feel free to join them uh, yeah, so I think yeah, Ansible may, there is an Ansible, the commercial version of Ansible, uh, which is uh, uh, which is already there. Uh, it's basically the part of the Ansible tower, uh, but then we'll, uh, we'll see uh, how, uh, because as I said, we're moving more towards the operator model, or if not, then we'll directly just use, say the Helm charts, uh, use Helm commands, Helm install. Uh, to to do the deployments, uh, so that's the way that we are going forward. And yeah, if you guys are interested uh, to help in that as well, uh, then that's also very good. Uh, but yeah, we are also moving towards uh, say directly using Helm commands, say Helm install, CA server, uh, etc. Yeah. Uh, repo URL, uh, Subhajit. Or I think uh, David will send the video links mm -hmm. and the repo URLs uh, and the and Discord the, server link. Yeah, yeah, and the read the docs website as well. Uh, sure.
Okay. That's all then. Thank you so much. Uh, hope uh, and yeah, we'll we'll keep this going and we'll have more discussions. Uh, I think we'll try to do once every two months. Uh, so uh, yeah, maybe in the new year. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. So